Within the general pane, we're able to control some of the overall look and operation of the Mac. At the top here, we get three choices for the general appearance of the interface. Light, dark, or auto, which is going to switch between light and dark mode when the sun rises and sets in your location. With auto selected right now, I remain in light mode since it's the middle of the day. Dark mode will change finder windows and other interface elements to dark grays. This affects different apps in different ways depending on how they're designed. In the Notes app, the entire interface and background of the text goes dark. But in Pages, only the interface is affected, not the actual text documents. If you work on your Mac in a dimly lit room, dark mode may reduce the strain on your eyes a bit. And many just like the overall look better than light mode. The accent color applies to things like menus and the highlight color around selected items. The highlight color simply controls what color is used to signify selected text. There are several choices in this menu, and we can also click Other to choose any color. If I change this to a shade of orange and then select some text in Safari, you can see that I get that color as I select text. Sidebar icon size applies to the Finder sidebar. It's a little strange that this can be adjusted here, but not in the Finder sidebar pane of Finder Preferences. I usually like to keep this set to large or medium. Your best option will depend on how many items you have in the sidebar and the size of your display. Check this box to automatically hide and show the menu bar at the top of the display. When this is on, we need to move the cursor to the top edge of the display to view the menu bar. Next, there are some settings for how to view scroll bars and how they operate. In my Show Scroll Bars setting, I have automatically based on mouse or trackpad selected. So on this Safari page, since I'm using a trackpad, I need to just drag two fingers up and down to scroll the page. The scroll bar appears on the right edge. When I release, the scroll bars are going to fade away. When visible, I'm still able to go over and click and drag on this scroll bar to move it. When I hover over an active scroll bar, it's going to thicken up and it becomes easier to scroll by click and drag. Select when scrolling and it's basically going to be the same as the automatic setting. Scroll bars are only going to appear when needed. Choose Always, and scroll bars are going to be available all the time. They never fade away. You'll notice in this Finder window, I now have scroll areas between each column, even though no scrolling is necessary. I prefer the scroll bars to only appear when I need them, so I stick with Automatically, based on mouse or trackpad. The clicking in the scroll bar options allows you to either click to jump to the next page, or click to a different spot in the document, possibly skipping several pages. So if I go into this PDF with Jump to the Next Page selected, when I click here in the scroll bar area, I'm sent to the very next page each time, no matter how far down I click. If I switch to Jump to the spot that's clicked, and then I click on those same spots, I'm taken several pages into the PDF. Next, I can set a default web browser. Whatever is selected here is going to be the web browser that gets opened when I click a link in another app. I prefer Safari, but if you've installed Firefox, Chrome, or any other browser, it should be listed here. The Ask to Keep Changes When Closing Documents setting has to do with the macOS autosave feature. So if I make a quick edit in this Pages document and then close the file by using Command W, the Mac auto saves the document without asking me anything. Turn on Ask to Keep Changes 
And now when I make a change and close, I'm asked if I want to keep those changes. Choose Save and the changes will be kept. Choose Cancel and the document won't be closed. Choose Revert and the change is not saved and the document still closes. If Close Windows when quitting an app is selected, the app will not remember if there was something open in it when it was last quit. Right now I have a Wikipedia page open in Safari. If I quit Safari with Command Q and then relaunch it, the Wikipedia page returns since it was never closed. With the Close Window option on, if I quit and reopen Safari, the window opens to the home page set in Safari Preferences. The page that was open when I quit is not retained. The Recent Items options let you choose how many apps, documents, or servers are displayed in your Recent Items list that is available under the Apple menu. Currently, a total of 10 each will display. In this checkbox, we can turn off App Handoff, which we discussed earlier. If having apps being used on your iOS device repeatedly popping up in your dock gets annoying, you can turn it off using this checkbox. Font smoothing is a setting that keeps text as easy to look at and as readable as possible. Keeping this default setting here on is normally the best choice. 